Welcome back. Ernie kicks us out of his office again, but fortunately we actually did what we needed to do in there. All that's left was some other stuff we might have been able to look at, but nothing important. We did push a button in there, which opened a passage somewhere we could hear. It doesn't seem to be in this room. Let's check back here. Aha! It is, in fact... This is the Mammalogy Laboratory. Yeah. Doesn't say anything about it, but it is, in fact, behind the Gorilla Crate here. I have a feeling. Yep. Same deal as before. These passages are all too dark. With the same description. Fortunately, we still have our lantern. And at least this one doesn't kill you without warning. At least you can somewhat reasonably expect that, that going in there is a bad idea. Without light. Wonder where this one comes out. Oh, the Egyptian room. Wonder if the murderer has been using these passages. Nothing we need to do here, though. There's the Countess. Can we ask her about what Watney Little? After all, Dr. Carrington is the one who indirectly told us about him, and she knew him. I'm sure I don't... I don't know anyone by that name, Miss Bow. Quite, quite sure. That sounded suspicious. If you ask me. Just caught him in time. I do not know that name. That seems to have been useless. I wonder if the uh, wire cutters were used to cut these wires. This is one of the three wires that formerly suspended the pterodactyl from the ceiling. Not really any way we could tell that, though. I wonder if we could cut off more wire. You pick it up and place it in your purse. We could. That might be useful for something. A length of sturdy wire. Can we tell anything special about it? Looks like magnified sturdy wire. Nope. All right then. We didn't have any new things to ask the Countess about, did we? That were actually interesting to ask her about? I guess not. Um, anyway, what else can we do? We've pretty much been everywhere now. We haven't talked to Wolf yet. Come to think of it, we haven't seen Steve all night either. And there's this key. A typical light. We've seen that. You have to do that while it's sparkling. It's this key that we couldn't get before because it was stuck to the painting. I wonder if there's a way to get that. Do you have anything sharp? 
Well, we have the Dagger of Amun Ra. Seems like a weird thing to use that for, but... Jeepers. Oh. To wait until the Countess is not here. Come on, Countess. Can you please leave? There we go. That worked. The oil paint. Missed the sparkle. Inspect. All right. Now we can try the dagger. With careful use of the dagger, you managed to pry the skeleton key off the Bosch painting without any serious damage. I think you can also use the wire cutters uh, for this, but I'm not entirely sure. So now we got a key. A shiny key, shaped like a skeleton. It's inscribed, manufactured by Acme Skeleton Keys. Skeleton Keys supposed to open everything. In reality they don't, but in fiction they often do. There's really only one thing we've seen in here that's locked at all. Wait, I'm going the wrong way. And that is the trunk in the Mammalogy Lab. Well, I guess... Dr. Carrington's uh, drawers, too. But I happen to know that we don't need to look at those. And I would rather like to find out what's in that trunk. So let's head over there. Passage closed again. And I'm saving. Let's open that trunk. The trunk has a name. Oh! Hmm, there's nothing the bugs like better than a little fresh meat. Wow, those bugs worked quickly. That's honestly kind of impressive. Yeah, no. That didn't work uh, quite well. Perhaps, however, we can distract those bugs. We did find this slab of meat, and we found it in an icebox. It's a cold, sto it's a cold storage locker. Basically a heavy-duty icebox for preserving specimens and domestic snacks. And that was indicated as being for domestic snacks, so I don't know if the bugs in there are domestic beetles. But it's worth a try, at least. The thing about it is you have to be quick. Open it and then immediately get the meat. So yeah, no way to find out that you need to do that without dying first. And they head off with the meat, which is kind of funny. Oh! And there's a skeleton in there. A skeleton lies in the trunk, its bones picked clean by the domestic beetles. They've efficiently removed every last shred of flesh, making the skeleton nearly impossible to identify. Okay. I do want to be able to identify it, though. I guess this is whoever was murdered on the Andrea Doria. It was stuffed in this trunk, explaining the weird smell of the trunk. But who is it? There's a watch on the skeleton. It appears to be a gold pocket watch. It appears to be... A close look reveals an inscription on the watch. To Dr. Archibald Carrington III for your years of dedicated service 
Many thanks from your staff at the British Museum. Okay. This watch belonged to Dr. Carrington. A close look. You pick it up and place it in your purse. And it is now a quarter to two, I think that means. And um, we overheard about a meeting that's supposed to happen at two between Wolf and um, Olympia. So we should probably go check that out. However, I want to think about what this watch here means. It means that the person in this trunk that this skeleton used to belong to is Dr. Carrington. The real Dr. Carrington. He was murdered on the Andrea Doria, presumably by Watney Little, who then took his place. He is the one who is involved with the Countess in the art burglary scheme, which explains uh, the Countess's weird reaction to the name of Watley Little because she did in fact know who that was. Also, it explains why several people during the party commented on Dr. Carrington not recognizing them or him seeming different than when they previously met the uh, met him, because it was, in fact, not the real Dr. Carrington. However, I do not believe that Dr. Carrington is behind the murders. After all, he had a perfectly good art burglary scheme going. He had no reason to murder anyone. It is possible that he was involved in the burglary of the dagger, though. He would certainly have the inside access needed to get at it. Although I don't think the Countess and Ziggy were involved in that. At least it didn't seem like it. Actually, I think... While I'm here, I'm walking through here a bit fast. I think it's possible to catch Yvette and Ernie again. Yep. Am I going to have to spank you? Amsgray! Maybe she's wanting to join us, yes? No. Very emphatically, no. Anyway. Um. I don't know what's weirder, the fact that the beetles are still carrying the meat around, or the fact that they could somehow open that door. Oh, and Daisy's here too. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, we have a meeting to catch. You hear muffled voices coming through the door to Yvette's office. But I guess... We should, um... Overhear this first. You lied to me! Well, lass, I guess that makes us even. You lied to me! You had something to do with the dagger burglary. You've been sleeping with someone else. I saw you go off with that dark worker. I've never slept with Steve. And the Ziggy fellow, he told me about you and the dagger. And you believe that little weasel. I've arrested the man more times than I can count. 
The Ziggy, I know him a long time. He would not lie to me. That man had lied to his own mother if someone paid him for it. Ziggy, he says you were working with the Carrington to steal the dagger. Lies! You can't be trusting the man. If he wasn't already dead, I'd pound the truth out of him. Maybe you already did. Were you sleeping with the little rat then? Of course not. You really surprise me, lass. I'd think you grew up on the streets accusing me of burglary like that. Where I grew up doesn't matter, does it? The important thing is... Wait, did you hear something at the door? Yeah, I was hearing it too. Keep your voice down then. Okay. Now that is very interesting. O'Reilly had something to do with the dagger theft. Actually, that might make sense. After all, Watney Little could have only gotten that police file from someone in the police. So maybe he and O'Reilly were in on the burglary together. O'Reilly providing... Uh, sorry, I mean Watney providing the inside access by posing as Dr. Carrington. That also kind of means he might be the uh, murderer, doesn't it? Definitely casts suspicions on, suspicions on him. Although we still have all that evidence against Yvette. Hmm. Now let's see if we can catch Wolf and Olympia meeting. Although I'm not entirely sure that's a meeting I want to witness, but let's try it anyway. And it's 2 a.m. And Wolf has arrived. Wolfie. Your facial scars are so wonderful. How did you get them? Fencing, Maestro. As a young man, I would fence with my Heidelberg friends. We would stop our opponent's saber just before it went through our faces, which would make the scars you see now. Ah, that is very interesting. You did not use masks to protect your faces? Nine. That would have been considered unmanly. Hmm, you'll have to show me how to do that sometime. There are many things I can show you, my strudel. Perhaps we should go somewhere less public, Wolfie. Oh yeah, good idea. Particularly since there's an annoying reporter wandering around the museum. That is not something I would have allowed if I was running things here. Give it time, Wolfie. Perhaps you will be running things here someday, if I have anything to say about it. Oh? What can you do? There are ways, but come, let us speak of these things in more privacy. Okay, well, other than them talking about Wolf running the museum, they don't really seem to be up to anything particularly suspicious. I don't think we really have any reason to suspect them. They're both creepy, but still. Dr. Miklos, I wanted to ask you about, um, Wadney Little. No, I certainly don't know anyone like that. I wish I did. And also about that bone. Not that I think she has anything particularly interesting to say about it, but still. Everybody keeps saying we should ask her about it. 
What a beautiful dinosaur bone. It is nicely fossilized, so you could probably use it to crush someone's skull. How I love bones. They are both the structure of life and death incarnate. Okay. That's more than I wanted to know about it. And... what? <gasps> oh no. Ernie this time. And he has been draped over the Mastodon. The long curved tusks of the Mastodon are currently supporting the limp weight of Ernie Leach, ex-maintenance engineer. The fabric of the shirt appears to be clinging somewhat to Ernie's chest. Another murder! And it's still Act 3. Unlike the previous game, it does not do one murder per act. Because we've had three in this act so far. Four! This is the fourth one. I wonder who wanted poor Ernie dead? Other than that guy with his, uh, that he has gambling doubts with, but I don't think he's here. Ooh, there's some hairs on his shirt. The hairs are bristled and clearly animal in origin, with a faint smell of alcohol. Huh. Interesting. These are animal hairs of some sort, too coarse to be human. You pick it up and place it in your purse. Animal hairs? Smelling of alcohol. Now, where that could that be coming from? Ernie's shirt feels cold and moist. Interesting. This arm is flung out to the side as if to say, I am completely limp. Ernie's right arm is stiffening in its outstretched position. Despite your closest examination, you find nothing unusual about Ernie's outstretched right arm. This arm is flung out. Ernie's head lolls back limply. Indeed, it does. You examine Ernie's head carefully, searching for contusions, bruises, or other evidence of foul play. You see little, but you do notice a faint odor not immediately identifiable. Ernie's head is slightly resistant to your efforts. Rigor mortis has apparently begun to set in. That is probably because I suspect he is not... he was not killed here. Ernie's mouth gapes, though whether this occurred in his death throes or simply as a result of the corpse's position is unclear. There is little to see in Ernie's mouth besides the usual teeth, tongue, hard and soft palates, and uvula. But there does seem to be an unusual amount of mucosa foam in the cheeks and throat, usually indicative of death by drowning. There's also a strange trickle of clear fluid. With obvious distaste, you sniff around the area of his mouth. The odor is one of pure alcohol. I believe that this man was drowned in the alcohol preservation vats. Perhaps he was on the trail of the uh, dagger's hiding location and the burglar killed him to conceal that to prevent its discovery, not knowing that we had in fact already discovered it. You gingerly place your fingers into Ernie's mouth. Cold and clammy hardly begins to describe the feeling. There's a sickening squishing sound as you probe the moist tissues. Nothing of interest though. Ernie's ears appear normal. Good. You inspect Ernie's ears closely and find nothing except the usual earwax. You touch Ernie's ear. It feels... Eerie. Oh my god. Ernie's head. 
Ernie's eyes are bulging in a peculiar way, leading you to believe he either choked, drowned, or was frightened to death. I think it would be drowned out of those choices. You look closely at Ernie's eyes, but find little except a few broken blood vessels. You consider doing the traditional thing and closing Ernie's eyes, but decide that perhaps it's better not to tamper with his body, which, though this may seem cold, is evidence of murder. Again, strange that we care about this now, but not at other times. Ernie's head... About his pants? Ernie's pants appear to be clinging somewhat to his legs. Again, because he was drowned? The pants feel dank and wet, but the moisture evaporates quickly from your fingers. Because it's alcohol. The pants are intact, but the smell emanating from them is noticeable. It's as if he took a swim in bathtub gin. Close enough, I guess. Ernie's shoes are intact, yet strangely dark and damp-looking. You press on one of Ernie's shoes and see a bit of moisture oozing from the dark, spongy leather. As soon as you remove your finger, the moisture immediately seeps back into the leather. The leather of Ernie's shoes are soaked through and through. The scent is an overpowering mixture of sweat, shoe polish, and alcohol. More evidence that he was drowned in the vats. The tusks are slightly dampened in the areas where the body has come in contact with them. Otherwise you find nothing unusual about them. Ernie's arm is draped over a tusk in a casual pose. If he weren't dead, he'd look like an ad for menswear. Yeah, sure. This is a pose often used in ads. A minute inspection of Ernie's left arm reveals nothing suspicious. Due to rigor mortis, Ernie's left arm is slightly stiff. Hence the expression stiff, referring to a corpse. Yeah, I kind of knew that. A rigid metallic frame supports the giant tusks and, at the moment, Ernie's lifeless body. The support structure, like a professional wrestler, appears very strong and totally clueless. <laughs> okay. Nice job at wrestlers there. The metallic supports are cold and rigid. A bit of dust comes off onto your fingers. You shake your hand gently to dislodge it. Alright, I think that's all we can find. And it is now a quarter past two. And, um, for some reason, O'Reilly does not show up here, even though we've discovered another dead body. I guess we didn't yell loud enough this time. Ach, you are smelling like the brewery, mein Kapitan. Either you've been drinking, or you've been eating too many of those grapes. Sure and Bigora, a man needs a little nip from his flask now and then, doesn't he? Personally, I do not require the drinking of the alcohol. It would impair my mental and physical skills. Ernie Leach has been murdered! What was that, lass? Ernie is dead! So, you finally come to us to confess, is that it? Confess? No! I'm reporting a murder! And you was the first one to find the body again? Well, I guess so. Quite a coincidence, Fraulein. I think we should be interrogating you to learn the truth! I've had enough of your lies! Calm down, Heimlich. If there's any interrogating to be done, I'll be the one who does it. Now then, lass, where did you find the body? The Mastodon Room. He's hanging from some mastodon tusks. Ach, he's probably just sleeping on the job. No, I'm sure he's dead. Well, I'll go take a look at him then. If I need to talk to you, I'll find you later. Uh, 
and that ends Act 3, and begins Act 4, appropriately enough. Museum of the Dead. It kind of already was that. Do we smell a promotion in the air? You're doing splendidly. Why, thank you. All right. It's the beginning of Act 4. We've had another murder. And we are beginning to suspect Detective Ryan O'Reilly. And actually, come to think of it, Wolf commenting that he smelled like alcohol might mean that he has been drinking. Or it might mean that he had something to do with the death of Ernie Leach, who, after all, was drowned in the alcohol vets. So, that's something to consider. However, we still don't know for sure, and there are still things we need to investigate. But we will do so in the next video.